From Hollywood, California, we bring you a new Dr. Christian drama starring Gene Herschel. Its title is Ten Meter Romance, and it is presented for your pleasure by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Tomorrow morning, around 9.30 in many a business office, the boss will be running through his morning mail. His secretary will be standing by thinking not about what the boss is doing, but what he looks like. Yes, she knows him, and she'd like to tell him about his personal appearance, but she doesn't dare to say a word about the dandruff scales on his coat collar. May we then speak for her. May we tell about Vaseline hair tonic, the sure treatment for dry scalp, the sure road to healthy-looking hair. If you want handsome, easy-to-manage hair, get a bottle of Vaseline hair tonic right away. Give your scalp a brisk Vaseline hair tonic massage before your weekly shampoo. And every morning, use a few drops on your comb or brush. Soon, loose dandruff will have gone and your hair will be well-groomed and youthful-looking. By using Vaseline hair tonic regularly, you will soon look as your women folk want you to look. Your best. Yes, Vaseline hair tonic will give you good-looking hair without dousing or slicking down. Ask your friend the druggist for Vaseline hair tonic in generous bottles at 40 or 70 cents. Now for tonight's play, Ten Meter Romance, starring Jean Hersholt as Dr. Christian, supported by Rosemary DeCamp as Judy Price, Norman Field as Albert Hawley, who thinks he's old at 50, Jessamine C. as his daughter Ethel, and Marjorie Lee as Mrs. Winters, a vivacious widow. As the curtain rises, the scene is the familiar one of the doctor's office, where Dr. Christian is giving Albert Hawley a physical examination. All right. Now take a deep breath. Exhale. Again? Hmm. Well, Albert, I can't find a thing the matter with you. You look fit as a fiddle to me. What makes you so sure there's something wrong? Oh, the way I feel, all washed out. No pep, heart, gut, something way like 60. Well, never mind, Doc. Just thought I'd have a checkup. It's probably nothing but old age beginning to get me. Old age? Well, you haven't reached your prime yet. What's, uh, what's worrying you, Albert? Nothing. Oh, nothing. You're not upset about Ethel, are you? No, I'm not upset. I've known it would have to happen sometime. Of course. Ethel's too pretty a girl to stay single. I'm lucky I've had her at home with me as long as I have. Hmm. You and your daughter have been very close since your wife died, haven't you? Yes, we have. Ethel's so young, so full of life. You wouldn't think she'd want to spend much time with an old codger like me, but she has. She even comes down to the basement and helps me tinker around in my workshop. <laughs> well, I'll get used to being alone, I suppose. You're not uh, displeased about her marrying Harry, are you? Good heavens, no. Harry's a fine boy and an ambitious one. He'll make his mark one of these days, and he thinks Ethel's the only girl that ever lived. No, it, it's a good marriage. You, you couldn't want a better. Well, then why do you let it give you a heart throb? Let it give me? Why, Doc Christian, what are you talking about? <laughs> Of course, I'd be happier if she wasn't going so far away, but... Oh, the Philippines uh, aren't so far away these days, with the long-distance telephone and the clipper ships. I'm afraid I won't be using either of them very much. Uh, where will his uh, headquarters be? Pretty remote. Uh, nice plantation. It, it's all experimental work. Near any settlement, so there'll be neighbors for Ethel? Very few, they tell Harry. She may be pretty lonely. She's not afraid, is she? Why, she thinks it's going to be romantic. Well, if they can stand it, I can. And you'll have to figure out something else to blame this heart of mine on, Dr. Christian. I don't believe I can. My diagnosis is that you're having an old-fashioned case of homesickness before Ethel even gets out of your sight. Well, I suppose you're right. She's being married on the 20th and sailing the week after, and I'll die before I let her know how I feel about it. Like a lost old man. Won't be for long, anyway. My life's about over. A few more years. A few more fiddlesticks. Well, what have I got left to live for? Ethel still got to know you're here, always ready to help her. Suppose she should need me for anything. What could I do? Why, it takes four days to fly out there. No, I've just got to get used to doing without her. If I can keep busy, good and busy, puttering around in my workshop, I... You've got to do more than that, Albert. You need Ethel. And she needs you and the love and protection you've always given her, even if she is married. 
Well, there must be some way It's to... no use, Dr. Christian. My life's over with, and I know it. Yes, Judy? Yes, I want to see if the bride's ready to leave. <laughs> you really think she'll make a grand exit down the front stairs? Oh, of course she will. She couldn't be mean enough to disappoint everybody. Look at that crowd. Yeah. I'd like to see her till a minute before she goes. Oh, come along up then. She must be ready by now. This is her room here. Ethel, it's Judy and Dr. Christian. Oh, come on in, both of you. We just wanted to say last words to Bride. Ethel, how sweet you look. Oh, that's a stunning going away outfit. Do you think they'll like it in the Philippines? Ah, they'll like it anywhere. Where's your father, Ethel? In there with Harry. They're closing the bags. Oh, we had the most awful time with the trunk. Dad's sitting on it, so Harry can lock it. Mm, probably you can help them, Judy. Oh, I'd be no good. I... Huh? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe my 110 pounds is just what's needed. You don't mind, do you, Ethel? Just for a moment. I, um... Well, I, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, of course I don't. Dr. Christian, you will keep an eye on Dad after I'm gone, won't you? I'll do what I can. I'm so worried about him. He doesn't seem at all well. Oh, he'll be all right if his mind's at rest. What's on his mind? You. Me. You're all he has, Ethel. Oh, I know. Oh, Dr. Christian, we'd take him along if we could. No, no, that wouldn't work. If only it wasn't so far. Ethel, I think I've found an answer. An answer? <laughs> I suppose you've noticed that I haven't given you a wedding present. Right. Oh, tell the truth. Not one of the five cake plates, the six soup ladles, the two dozen salt and pepper shakers had my card on it. Oh, but Dr. Christian, I didn't expect... I have decided to give your wedding present to your father. To my father? Yes. Of course, he'll have to get a license to use it. Get a license? Well, what in the world is it? It's a device by which he can know just what you're doing and how you feel and what your plans are. But I still don't understand what you... I can't afford a new one, but I found a man who'll help us build one. Cheap. <laughs> then when you met KA2AB... KA2AB? Yes. That's the coal letter of an amateur operator quite near you. I found out. Check on it as soon as you get there. Well, the luggage is all set. Everything's under control, honey. Harry's waiting. One more kiss, Dad. I... Goodbye. I... I'll write you often, maybe every day. And I'll be thinking of you all the time. I know you will, Ethel. I I'll be thinking of you, too. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. I've got to run. I... Dad, I just can't leave. Ethel, my little girl. Oh, come now. We can't have our bride with her nose all red. Besides, uh, it isn't going to be as bad as it seems. I was trying to tell Ethel... <laughs> I'm reversing the conventional order of things a little, Albert. I'm giving her wedding present to you. Giving Ethel's wedding present to me? Well, why should you? Because I think she'll enjoy it more that way. Albert, do you know what a ham is in amateur shortwave circles? Because that's what you're going to be. A ham? Dr. Christian, what on earth are you giving us? I'm giving you a shortwave radiophone transmitter. <laughs> Mrs. Winters, I, I simply can't believe it's true. It's, it's some sort of magic. It's like a fairy tale. Oh, it does seem like magic sometimes, this business of talking to people 6,000 miles away. Oh, it's not only that. It's everything. Coming to a faraway place like this, wanting to believe in the scheme of Dr. Christians and, and not being able to somehow. And feeling in my heart there wouldn't be anyone who'd help me and then finding a person like you. Well, having you folks come out here hasn't exactly displeased me either. It's been pretty lonely since my husband died. Oh, it must have been. Well, in another year or so, I can go back to the States and leave the place with my overseer. But right now, well, I feel I've got to be right here. How long have you been a, a ham? Well, Dave and I fooled around with it a little before he died. Put in the transmitter, got to know most of the other hams. But since I've been all alone, oh, it seemed a lot more important. Oh, of course it would be. Hams get to be just one big happy family. I've got more friends around the 10-meter band than I ever had back home. Oh, we'll give your father a grand welcome. 
introduce him around, why, well, he'll get to know everybody in no time. Oh, he's so proud of getting his license. Uh, what time is it? One o'clock. All right, now. Let's see what happens. What do you have to do? Well, now, it's very simple. Here. Now, turn the switch. Let the tubes warm up. Now, see? Now, turn that dial like this. Oh, suppose... Suppose he doesn't answer. Oh, now, stop worrying and sit down. Oh, but I can't. Shh. This is K.A. 2A.B. K.A. 2A.B. Calling W9OK. Calling W9OK. K.A. 2A.B. Calling W9OK. What's the matter? He doesn't answer, does he? Hello? Hello? W9OK? Come in, W9OK. K.A. 2A.B. Calling W9OK. Oh, calling W9OK. Hello? Hello? K2AB, this is W9OK. Listen, there he is. There he is. Hello? Hello, Daddy. Daddy, hello. Hold on a minute now. Hello? Hello, W9OK. Ethel? Uh, Ethel? Ethel's here, Mr. Hawley. Ethel's right here. Is this Ethel? No, but Ethel's here. She's all right, and she's going to talk to you in just a minute. Well, who is this? This is K.A. to A.B. Uh, are you, uh... Uh, are you a lady operator? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lady operator I've never seen talking to me from way out there in the Philippines. Uh, can you uh, can you hear me all right? Uh, everything I say? Yes, and so can all the other hams who are listening <laughs> in. <laughs> this thing's just like an old-fashioned party line telephone, isn't it? <laughs> just exactly. Ethel, Ethel, child, here. He's ready to talk to you, dear. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy. W nine OK. W nine OK. Ethel. Ethel. How are you, my dear? Is everything all right? Oh, everything's perfect, Dad. How are you? I'm well, Ethel. I'm very well. I, I miss you, but... Well, I've had more doggone fun putting this rig together. I'd never have believed it'd work. Hello? H Hello? H are you there? I'm right here, Dad. How's Harry? Oh, he's wonderful. He sends you his best. Dad, how's Dr. Christian? He went out of here an hour ago grumbling because now all of his patients want radio transmitters. Uh, uh, Ethel, who's your operator? Oh, she's, she's one of our neighbors, Dad. Her name's Winters. She says we can talk to whenever we want to. Oh, Dad, isn't this wonderful? Yes, this is pretty fine. I've got to go now. We'll talk the same time tomorrow, won't we? Yes, it's meant a lot to hear your voice. Uh, Ethel, uh, before you go, uh, hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Yes, Dad? Uh, Ethel, about your friend, uh, KA2AB. She interests me. Uh, is she good looking? <laughs> W9OK calling KA2AB. I'm in KA2AB. This is KA2AB. Hello, Mr. Hawley. Mrs. Winters, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Ethel isn't here today, Mr. Hawley. She couldn't get over. <laughs> Will you tell her I'm sending her a Christmas package, Mrs. Winters? Uh, some things I saw in Chicago I thought she might like. Yes, I'll tell her. And uh, some ties and things for Harry. And uh, uh, Mrs. Winters, I, uh, I took my liberty of enclosing just a, a little remembrance for you. <laughs> I hope you'll find it useful. UAB calling W9OK. KA2AB calling W9OK. This is W9OK. Good morning, Mrs. Winters. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, Mr. Hawley. Have you got your Easter bonnet on? W9OK, calling KA2AB. Hello, W9OK. Hello, W9OK. Hello, Mr. Hawley. We're all here together having Thanksgiving dinner. Not much like Thanksgiving here. I wish I were with you. No, we wish we were with you, eating turkey. KA2AB, calling W9OK. Come in, W9OK. Calling W9OK. -OK. Hello? Hello, KA2AB? Mr. Hawley. Uh, how's Ethel? Ethel's just fine, Mr. Hawley. And are you listening? I'm listening. Mr. Hawley, your grandfather to a seven-pound boy. Do you hear me? Mr. Hawley. W9OK. W9OK. Come in, W9OK. This is Dr. Christian, KA2AB. W9OK can't come in just now. He seems to have fainted. <laughs> Well, now, 
Alfred. How's everything? Everything's okay, Dr. Christian. I'm glad you stopped in. I'm going to talk to Ethel in a few minutes. Uh, you can say hello to her. I'd like to. How's the baby? The boy, he's wonderful. Gained eight ounces last week. Ethel says he looks like me. What does Mrs. Winter say? She says he looks like my pictures. Oh, <clears throat> then she knows how you look. Why, uh, well, Ethel's shown her snapshots, of course. Why? Nothing. I just wondered. You haven't any pictures of her by any chance, have you, Albert? Uh, Mrs. Winters? Why, uh, why, yes, yes, I have. There's one right there on my desk. Hmm. Oh, attractive woman, isn't she? Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> Ethel likes her, doesn't she? Uh, why, she's been like a mother to Ethel. She's telling her just what to do about the baby. The doctor's 50 miles away. Ethel has, well, she was pretty nervous at first, but now she just goes over to Mrs. Winters with her problems. You certainly did something for this family when you got this short wave idea. Yes, it seems to have worked. <laughs> oh, one o'clock, time to get on the air. Uh, she's uh, always very punctual. K-A-2-A-B calling W-9-O-K. K-A-2-A-B calling W-9-O-K. There she is. Hello. Uh, hello, this is W-9-O-K. W-9-O-K. Mr. Hawley, I've been calling you for an hour. The baby's sick. Very sick. We've sent a boy for the doctor, and he's been gone for hours. We don't know what to do. Wait, Dr. Christian's right here. He'll tell you. Listen, listen. Be quiet, Albert. Mrs. Wenders, tell me the symptoms. He's been crying for hours. He acts as though he had a terrible pain in his stomach. I'm afraid he's going into convulsions. Now listen, carefully. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. Get the baby into a tub of hot water, as hot as he can stand. Put some mustard into it. Then I want you to give him a spoonful of... Calling KA2AB. KA2AB. Oh, why doesn't she answer? She's taking care of the baby, Albert. He'll call once he can. Calling KA2AB. I can't bear it, Dr. Christian. I can't bear it. If anything happens to that baby... Oh, perhaps the doctor has come by now. Take it easy, Al. W9OK calling KA2AB. Oh, if it was going to do any good, wouldn't he be better by now? If she did everything you told her to, would it really help any? Well, a doctor can't diagnose accurately 6,000 miles away, Albert. But if she described the symptoms properly, the treatment was right. Okay, calling KA2AB. Come in, KA2AB. KA2AB. Listen. K-A-2-A-B, calling W-9-O-K. This he is. She's calling now. This is W-9-O-K. This is W-9-O-K. W-9-O-K. Mr. Hawley, your grandson's all right. He's all right. Baby Albert's gone to sleep. outside, Dr. Christian. Albert Holy? Show him in. He says it isn't a professional call. He came down to tell you some news. <laughs> About Ethel and the baby? Mm. <laughs> Let's have it. Come in, Mr. Holly. Hello, Dr. Christian. I suppose I should have kept this until after office hours, but I'm just bursting with excitement. Don't go, Judy. I want you to hear, too. Uh-huh. Folks, Ethel's coming home. Home? To River's End? For a while. Harry's been transferred to Chicago. Oh, so you're going to get to see your grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> Doc, he's got a tooth. And he's trying to stand up already. Uh, he must be an unusual baby. Oh, I'm dying to see him and Ethel, too. When do they get here? Middle of June. Oh, that'll be wonderful having them back and so close. When you talk to Ethel, tell her I'm writing. Will you, Mr. Hawley? I certainly will. Well, Albert, so you're going to have Ethel back again. And her family as well. Yes, it'll seem pretty good. I imagine it will. Uh, Al, uh, how's your heart these days? My heart? Yes. Uh, Don't you remember complaining about having spells of heart trouble just before Ethel was married? Say, I do. I'd plumb forgotten. (laughs) Well, I guess I've been too busy to notice them. After all, I'm a pretty young man to be having a lot of aches and pains. (laughs) (laughs) You're right, Albert. I think we can mark your case one of complete recovery. Mrs. Walker's waiting, Dr. Christian. All right, Judy. Well, Albert? Uh, Dr. Christian, just one thing more. I, uh... I need your advice. I thought you just said that... Well, uh, this hasn't uh, anything to do with my health. Uh, uh, Dr. Christian, do you think it would be undignified uh, for a man of my position to uh, uh, marry again? In your position? Well, after all, I am a grandfather. What's that got to do with it? 
If you've seen someone you care about... That's just it. I, I, I never have seen her. Never seen her? Oh, you, uh, <clears throat> you mean uh, Mrs. Windows? Yes. Uh, I, uh, I, I want to ask her to come back with Ethel and Harry, uh, to come here to River's End and uh, to, uh, to marry me. Well, then, then just ask her the next time you talk to her. Ask her this afternoon. Seems very appropriate. After all, it is a shortwave romance. <laughs> but all the other hams will be listening in. Oh, you don't suppose it'll be any surprise to them, do you? I'll bet they're, they're for it. Every one of them. All the way around the ten-meter band. And if she says yes before all those witnesses, you got her. Well, uh, if you think it's all right. Um, Dr. Christian, now, I know this sounds foolish, but... Uh, What'll I say? Well, if I were in your place, I'd make it very simple. Simple? I'd just say, this is W9OK, calling KA2AB. Come in, KA2AB. Will you marry me? we could chalk up another happy ending for River's End folks, thanks to our good Dr. Christian, whose prescriptions usually work. Gene Hirschhold, starred in the role of Dr. Christian, will be here in a moment to tell you about next week's play. Meanwhile, here's an important message about an all-too-common scalp condition. Thousands of men today are troubled by dry scalp without even knowing just what it is or what to do about it. So here's how you can tell very easily whether you have dry scalp, the arch enemy of handsome hair. Look for these telltale signs. Itching scalp, dandruff scales, brittle, hard to manage hair. If you detect any one of these symptoms of dry scalp, your hair needs the kind of care that Vaseline hair tonic can give. Vaseline hair tonic is different. Unlike ordinary hair dressings, it contains absolutely no drying ingredients. There is nothing in Vaseline hair tonic that tends to dry your scalp, nothing. Instead, Vaseline hair tonic supplements the natural oils of the scalp. Before each shampoo, give your scalp a Vaseline hair tonic massage. It will counteract the drying effect of sun, water, and soap. And every morning, comb or brush on a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic. It will give you soft, easy to manage, good looking hair without dousing or slicking down. See what Vaseline hair tonic will do for your hair even within a single week. Only 40 cents for a generous bottle, 70 cents for the large economy size. Insist on Vaseline hair tonic. And now Gene Hirschhold is out in front. And our studio audience is giving him an enthusiastic reception. What kind of story have you selected for us for next week, Dr. Christian? The title is Roughneck. Roughneck? Well, that could be the story of a boy or a horse or... <laughs> well, it's a story of both art. The story of a boy and a horse. So come on, all of you racing fans, and join us next week at the same hour. Until next Wednesday evening, then I'll say good night. Take your children to see a matinee performance of the new RKO picture titled The Courageous Dr. Christian. Gene Hersholt is starred in the title role. This is Arthur Gilmore adding a good night for the makers of Vaseline Preparations. If you work in the garden, here's a helpful tip. When a long day of weeding or transplanting has made your hands rough, sore, or blistered, reach for Vaseline jelly. Rub it on gently. Soothing, healing Vaseline jelly will quickly relieve roughness. Protect the hands against the irritation that may result from exposure to dirt. Get Vaseline jelly, only 10 cents a generous jar. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>